This is Political Forum for Wednesday, October 23rd, 2013. Uh, we welcome today as our guest, Alderman Anthony Bill from Chicago's Ninth Ward. Uh, thank you for joining us again on thank Political you for Forum. Me. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at CAN TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call in program uh, that's designed to connect you uh, with your elected officials. Uh, during the next 25 minutes or so, we hope you'll have an opportunity to learn more about the alderman. Uh, and his views on some of the challenges and opportunities facing the city of Chicago. Uh, above all, po this program is really about fostering a strong sense of civic engagement. Uh, your calls, your voice are a big component of the program. Uh, we invite you to join in. The Alderman wants to hear your questions and comments. Uh, you can reach us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, mm -hmm. welcome back to the program. Thank you so much. Uh, for our viewers uh, who may be meeting you for the first time tonight, mm -hmm. um, say a little bit about uh, your elected office and what inspired you to uh, get involved in public service. Well, first I was uh, elected in 1999 and uh, I never had any political experience, never been part of anybody's political organization. I was just, uh, you know, growing up in the community, been born and raised, and uh, I saw that uh, something needed to change and we needed to make a difference. And so I got involved in the community and um, got involved in, um, you know, just different organizations throughout the area. And I just saw that the Alderman's Office can have a huge impact on your community. And so um, I just got involved, never thinking I was going to run for public office, but I saw that there was a need and there was a void. And so I stepped out and, uh, and I was first elected in 1999 as one of the youngest elected officials in the state of Illinois. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the Ninth Ward, mm -hmm. uh, which I think includes uh, Roseland, Pullman, mm -hmm. and uh, the South Side of Chicago. Right. Well, uh, the Ninth Ward goes from uh, 138th Street all the way to uh, 87th Street now under the new remap. Um, the Bishop Ford to the east and State Street low uh, to the west. Uh, so it's roughly about 56,000 people in the Ninth Ward, and uh, you know we're blessed to uh, you know been here for almost 15 years now. Terrific. Um, the issue of t today in Chicago uh, is the city's budget. Uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, this morning, uh, Mayor Emanuel unveiled his proposed 2014 budget, a $7 billion budget. Correct. Uh, I suppose if you smoke cigarettes or like to drive fast, you may not be a fan of this budget. <laughs> um, but the, the mayor has introduced several measures designed to close a projected uh, $339 million uh, budget shortfall. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us a little bit about the budget and your views about uh, the mayor's uh, proposed uh, 2014 budget. Well, uh, when we first started the budget process, there were projections uh, a couple of years ago that we actually would have been closer to s almost $750 million. And because we've done some streamlining and, and done some, uh, um, you know, belt tightening, we got it down this year to 338 almost $340 uh, million. Um, it's still a very tight budget, but the biggest thing that's really driving our budget is also cost of um, you know personnel. That's one of the biggest uh, things that we're dealing right now. Uh, and if we don't do something uh, with the pension reform that's coming up this year in Springfield, we're looking at close to a uh, billion dollar deficit next year. And so right now uh, we're able to uh, balance this budget with uh, raising minimal fees on, on certain violations, about six violations uh, in total. And then there's some TIF surplus that we're using to balance the budget, and uh, and then the cigarette tax. Um, but bottom line is, if you don't speed, this budget won't affect you. If you don't park illegally, the budget will not affect you. Uh, you know, so this budget is basically looking at people who are breaking the law. If you don't break the law, it won't affect you one iota. And so I'm telling all the people in the Ninth Ward, slow down. Don't speed because the speed cameras are there. There's one on 127th and, and Eggleston, and there's one on 95th in between State and Michigan. Just slow down, do the speed limit, and it won't affect you. So Ninth Ward residents, I'm telling you right now, slow down. And, uh, you know, and this budget won't affect you at all. And if you quit smoking, <laughs> the, the budget won't affect you. A public service announcement from <laughs> Alderman Anthony Bill from Chicago's uh, Ninth Ward. Uh, this program uh, is all about your views, your voice. Uh, we invite you to join uh, the conversation by dialing in at 312-738-1060. Uh, 
uh, Alderman, you're the chair of the, the Transportation and Infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, Committee of the City Council, uh, so you're uh, very familiar with mm -hmm. uh, the red light cameras and right. the, the uh, speeding cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, how much revenue uh, is projected uh, to be brought in by those uh, cameras? Well, right now the project projection could be uh, close to 100 million, maybe 120 million. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I've monitored those cameras and I've looked at them. And the first couple of cameras that were implemented, uh, just the test phase, if those numbers came in, we will blow the roof off of that hundred million dollars um, as far as revenue streams coming into the city. And so right now, um, you know, the the mayor and the, the um, commissioner of CDOT is giving everyone one month one, from the time that camera is implemented, and you will get a warning for that first month. After that, then they will go live. Um, and so that's why we want to get those warnings out. Uh, but the speed cameras, the red light cameras, uh, and, you know, everything that's coming along with that, um, you know, is how, you know, the mayor's proposing to balance his budget. You know, so we just we just want to make sure that everybody knows that to do the right thing. And, um, you know, I think we'll, we'll be OK at the end of the day. Terrific. Uh, you're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive program. Uh, we invite you to join us at 312-738-1060. Uh, our guest today is Alderman Anthony Bill from Chicago's uh, Ninth Ward. Uh, let's stay on transportation. There's mm -hmm. so many transportation issues that are in the news here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the biggest thing to hit the city since cows on parade <laughs> are the Divi bikes. Right. I woke up one day, was a, everywhere in the city is the Divi bikes. Mm -hmm. um, a, as chair of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, um, are you a proponent of the Divi bikes, and do you have a membership, and have you uh, uh, taken one for a spin? Uh, I have not. Uh, and, you know, from a personal standpoint, I think we might want to slow down on the DB bikes. Um, right now, um, you know, they're all over um, the downtown area. You don't see them in the communities. Uh, and, you know, right now, um, you know, there are a lot of complaints coming in that they're taking away parking and, sh and, and access to the streets to make all these bike lanes. And so we have to look at the cost of what is, um, you know, incurring the taxpayers to put all these bike lanes in place. And then, uh, you know, how much revenue are we getting back from that? So we have to start looking at it. And we don't have any concrete um, numbers on that as of yet. And so I think we need to maybe slow down uh, because I'm getting a lot of complaints about, you know, just the traffic and the amount of bikes that are out there. And then we want to make sure that, um, you know, and we're going to raise this concern about our accidents on the rise for motorists hitting bicycles, and we want to look at that. And so before we continue to roll this thing out, I think we want to make sure we look at some data to see if it's feasible and safe to continue to move forward. Terrific. I think we have a, a caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Hi. I, I sure am. Thank you. Hi, Alderman. Um, thank you for taking my call. No problem. Thank um, you. Thank you. I, I had a question about the mayor's budget that, that he's rolled out today, and um, he obviously has called on the governor to make some decisions about the pensions because apparently city pensions would be affected as well. And it seems as if the way that we're going to be try trying to solve the pension crisis or the budget shortfall mm -hmm. is really with the red light cameras and perhaps the, the, the cigarette tax. And it feels as if, you know, the, the backs, you know, of the citizens are being crawled upon in order to balance the budget. And I wanted to know if there are some other solutions perhaps the council will be willing to look at in order to generate revenue instead of, you know, hiking fees and fines. And next year, I hear like a property tax increase. Right. Well, I mean, you you raise a very good question. And the problem is right now, we have not raised property taxes at all. We haven't touched property taxes. We haven't touched sales taxes. Uh, and um, we haven't touched gas tax. And those are the big three that, uh, you know, usually government looks at to balance our budgets. The biggest problem we're having right now as far as pension reform is the lack of action in Springfield. And it's, uh, you know, the governor and all your state senators and state reps, they, for some reason, are reluctant in refusing to address this pension problem. So if they don't do their jobs in Springfield, then we as a city are going to be forced to, to look at property tax. And if property taxes go up because of the lack of um, action in Springfield, the residents in, in the city of Chicago's taxes will triple. And so you will see people fleeing this city every single day if their taxes triple. And that's what's going to happen. So this is a crisis that we're dealing with right now. And so I'm, 
you know, imploring everybody to call your state rep, call your state senator, call the governor, and tell them the most important thing they can deal with right now in Springfield is this pension problem. And uh, you, you heard uh, Alderman Bill call this situation with pensions a crisis, mm -hmm. uh, despite what, what maybe you, you, you read in the papers. Uh, he refers to this as a crisis, and certainly uh, the importance of resolving uh, pensions in Springfield was a, a focus of uh, the mayor during his budget mm -hmm. presentation. Uh, I think we have another caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Hello. G good evening. Welcome to Political Forum. Uh, please go ahead with your question. Good evening. My comment is I believe the mayor's proposal is an excellent proposal for the state of Illinois, and I, and I think he should put sales tax increases on alcohol as well as cigarettes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so not just smokers, but if you drink, if you you'll drink. help solve the city's <laughs> all problems. All the amusement tax. Uh, huh? <laughs> uh, 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 all the sin taxes. Uh, do you have a view about the caller's opinion? Well, again, you know, we have to look at everything, and uh, when we have a budget shortfall, we have to put everything on the table. And so, you know, I know that there's a proposal now to um, start looking at uh, people who are riding bicycles. And, you know, that's a proposal one of my colleagues is putting in. And, you know, so everything is on the table. But at the end of the day, we have to do what's right to make sure that people are protected, our schools are continued to function, and we can repair our water mains, our sewers, and all the things that go along with the quality of life of the city. And so we have a huge task in front of us. When I first was elected in 1999, the city's budget was $4.3 billion. Now, here we are, in, uh, um, you know, going into the 2014 uh, budget, a $7 billion budget. That's a huge, huge balloon when you start looking at where the budgets have gone, and most of it is going to salaries. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the items you just mentioned is this notion of uh, uh, a fee uh, for uh, bicycle owners. Mm -hmm. And I think a measure uh, was uh, talked about by one of your colleagues, Alderman Pat Dowell, of mm -hmm. a potential $25 fee, a bike registration fee, and maybe right. some training involved in that. So it sounds like um, because of these desperate times, that's something that you're you're open to, or is that something that uh, you know, maybe uh, you're opposed to at this point? <laughs> well, the thing is, a lot of things are being put on the table, and as we go through the budget process, we'll look at everything. So, you know, right now, I have not formed an opinion on that proposal because I've just heard of it. I have not, you know, actually read the legislation, and so before I really look at it and read it, um, you know, I can't really comment on if I'm for it or against it. Great. Our special guest today uh, is Alderman Anthony Bill from Chicago's Ninth Ward. Uh, the mayor's uh, 2014 budget was introduced today. Uh, we've had a couple of calls about the budget. I think we have another caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, I wanted to ask um, about the upcoming 10-year uh, cable franchise renewal for Comcast. Uh, wonderful programs like Political Forum, this program we're talking back and forth from my living room to your studio. And uh, for 30 years now, CAN TV has been serving uh, the Chicago area. And the RCN contract was really good, and that has to be approved by the city council. And now, uh, in March of the next year, uh, that new contract has to be uh, uh passed and approved by the city council. And I wanted to uh, just read from um, uh, our uh, distribution of our um, points that we're making, uh, because uh, then I won't be stuttering along. Uh, you're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> oh, there are three points, and one is direct unrestricted funding of CAN-TV to preserve the independent management structure that has worked for 30 years. The second one, funding agreement that meets or exceeds RCN's agreement. And the third one is technical parity that is at a minimum meeting RCN's standard to assure the public's channels are not left behind. And I'd like to send you a copy of this uh, to your ward office, if okay. I may. It's signed by all of the members of our group. And uh, if you just say a few words about your feelings about this issue that's going to be coming up so soon. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for your call. Alderman. Thank you. Well, you uh, if you don't know, uh, I have been a, a huge fan and a, a big advocate for CAN TV and public access uh, as a whole. Uh, I was involved with the negotiations years ago with, with RCN and CAN TV and Comcast and all the other entities. And, uh, you know, I'm a huge supporter 
in uh, public access, and we want to make sure that it stays whole, and we want to grow Can TV because I do believe that Can TV provides a lot of great information, uh, you know, f as far as what's happening, not only in politics, but just what's going on in the communities. And we want to make sure that we want to continue to grow that. And um, trust me, I will always advocate for public access in Can TV. Terrific. And uh, Can TV is television for the people and by the people. <laughs> and we appreciate your call. Uh, you're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in program. Uh, our guest tonight is Alderman Anthony Bill from Chicago's uh, Ninth Ward. Uh, we're talking about the, the challenges and opportunities facing the city. Uh, we, we've talked uh, about the budget. Uh, we've talked about transportation, mm -hmm. uh, Divi bikes, potential <laughs> uh, fees for, for bike uh, uh, mm -hmm. registration. Uh, one other dynamic that's changed so much over the last decade or so uh, around economic development is this, the, the, the public opinion, I think, around big box stores. Correct. Uh, and I, I remember, uh, you know, five or six years ago, you know, Walmart was uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the enemy and mm -hmm. there was a, an effort uh, by many to keep, especially on the city council, to keep Walmart out of city right. limits at all costs. Mm -hmm. uh, flash forward to today, um, in many instances, Walmart is uh, trumpeted as a champion or catalyst for economic development and jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, and you recently uh, successfully uh, negotiated a deal to open a, a Walmart in the ward. Uh, I know there was a major event mm -hmm. a, a few days ago uh, attended by the mayor to trumpet mm -hmm. uh, you know, that as a step forward in terms of jobs. Right. Can you talk a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. Walmart and the importance of Walmart in your, right. your ward mm -hmm. and, and economic development and jobs in general? Sure. Well, you know, I was the one uh, in the city council along with, uh, at the time, Mayor Daley. Uh, we negotiated the entire package for Walmart to come into the city of Chicago. And what we did was we were able to, for the first time in history, bring the unions and Walmart to the table. They had never in history sat down at the table to figure out what was best for the communities. So we were able to bring those two entities together, and they had the same goal in mind. They wanted to provide jobs. They wanted to make sure people had health care. They wanted to make sure people had access uh, to fresh produce and things like that. But if you don't sit down at the table, you don't know what you agree on or what you don't agree on. And so when we sat down at the table for the first time, and we were able to strike the deal for the entire city. Walmart pays more in the city of Chicago than they pay anywhere else in the country. And we were able to negotiate that deal. We got a community benefits agreement to make sure that Walmart hires from the community. Their buildings are built by the community. And then we had a project labor agreement with the unions that every Walmart will be 100% union built. And so we got creative and we put all those things in, a, in, in play. And so now that's why you see all the Walmarts coming into the city of Chicago. But at the same time, it's helping the community because in my particular ward, Walmart created 400 jobs, created um, um, and took a huge, uh, you know, plot of land that was undeveloped. And now you have Walmart, we have Ross going in, we have Planet Fitness going in, we have Ann and Lennon's, uh, and now we have um, on another development that's taking place. We have uh, Famous Dave's coming in. We have, you know, restaurants now coming into the area. So that area is really transforming. Now Walmart is not the best paying jobs. We do understand that. However, it is now paved the way for Method. Method is a company that um, they produce cleaning products. Method is now coming to the Ninth Ward, and they're building a $42 million facility right behind Walmart, and their average salary is 65000 and up. So it has paved the way for another development to come into the area, create more jobs in the area, and is really helping transform that whole corridor coming into the city of Chicago. So we're extremely excited the fact that we have Walmart, we have Method coming in, and um, you know, and if anyone wants to see uh, exactly um, what Method has to offer uh, and all the products they have, you can go to my website at um, ward09.com uh, or you can call my office at 773-785-1100. All that information is there and we want to make sure that the community benefits from not only the jobs but the construction jobs that are taking place. So there's a lot of activity happening now in the Ninth Ward and we could not be more excited that, as, as far as where we are now. But it all started because we were able to get Walmart to anchor that site. 
you heard it from Alderman Bill. He views Walmart as an important domino in uh, his economic development agenda in the Ninth Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, you're watching uh, Political Forum. This is a live interactive program. Uh, we invite uh, your calls and questions for Alderman Anthony Bill. Uh, I think we have a caller on the line. Uh, caller, are you there? Yes, good evening. Good evening. I have a question. Yes, uh, Mayor Emanuel is asking for the uh, Illinois General Assembly to look at a three-year mandatory minimum uh, for illegal gun possession and, and other gun crimes. just want to see uh, what's your take on that, Alderman. Right. Well, you know, I was in the committee meeting, and we raised a lot of very good questions as far as that, um, that ordinance is concerned, uh, well, that bill in Springfield. I have a few reservations as far as that because there's no provision and we want to make sure that there's some provisions in place because right now if you just happen to forget your wallet and you, you've had everything in place, you could be subject to the three-year minimum. You can have all the identification in place and so they're not giving the judge any leeway. This is mandatory and we don't want to make anything mandatory because somebody may have made a mistake and left their FOID card at home or they moved and they forgot to renew it because they didn't get the renewal notice. And so now you will be subject to a three-year minimum because you didn't renew or you forgot your FORD card. I think that's something that we need to address. And so when you start talking about mandatory, not giving a judge any leeway, I think that's where we have to draw the line because sometimes people do make mistakes. Thank you for your call. Uh, you know, the issue of uh, gun violence mm -hmm. and the importance of having safe streets is something that uh, dominates uh, the headlines here in Chicago. Uh, you're past chair of the police and fire mm -hmm. uh, committee of, of the city council. Uh, I, I know this is an important issue for you. Yep. Uh, so you, you kind of share your views about the mandatory minimum uh, uh, around uh, guns. What are some solutions to, mm -hmm. to, in terms of making our streets safer? Well, I think one of the things uh, we need to really look at is the fact that when you have an imbalance of police resources in the city of Chicago, and the mayor has you know, he's made a huge step forward as far as trying to um, get that balance as far as making the entire city safe. But we need to continue to, um, you know, move forward and, and make some bigger strides because it's not happening fast enough. Uh, the other day I was uh, down on Michigan Avenue and I saw three police officers on every corner. Hmm. I don't think we need three officers on every corner. If we just put two on every corner, now you can free up other officers and you can put those officers in the communities where people are being murdered, we have robberies, uh, you know, domestic violence, and all those things taking place. But police is not the only issue. We need better uh, parents uh, doing a better job with their with their children. Uh, you know, we need more community centers in our community. We need to continue to put people to work. We need uh, after school programs. We need youth programs. So there are a lot of things that take place that we need to address the issues that are hurting our community. Uh, but I've been a big advocate for resource reallocation, and I think we can make a lot of headway if we shift more officers where the problems are without making other communities less safe. And I've always said that, you know, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, well, you're trying to take my police. I would never try to jeopardize another community. However, if that community doesn't have any crime issues, then give me some of your resources so my community can have the same quality of life that you are sharing every single day. And that's my, you know, the biggest thing that I've been working on in the city of Chicago. Terrific. Uh, another project that's uh, garnered some headlines uh, in and around your ward is mm -hmm. in the historic uh, Pullman area mm -hmm. in an effort to uh, transform uh, the historic Pullman area into a national park. A national park, that's uh, correct. An urban national park. Mm -hmm. uh, tell our viewers a little bit about that project mm -hmm. and, and uh, where uh, your views about it. Right. Well, you know, I was, you know, raising this issue and at the time Congressman Jackson raised the issue and the study came back that we do qualify to be designated as a national park. You know that I've been making a huge push in the city of Chicago uh, to um, make sure that the Obama library comes back to the community where Obama got his political start from. He did his political organizing in the Ninth Ward. And so we want to make sure that not only do we get the designation for the National Park, but we also be the home of the Obama Library, which will have a huge economic impact on our community. So we're going to continue to fight that fight until we're successful. Terrific. Uh, we'd like to thank Alderman Anthony Bill, our guest tonight on Political Forum. Uh, his advice, don't speed, 
Don't smoke. <laughs> Bring the Obama Presidential Library to the go. Pullman area, and Chicago uh, will win. There you uh, go. <laughs> we we, uh, we believe uh, that an informed and engaged uh, citizenry is essential to a healthy democracy. Uh, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for calling in. And we invite you to join us uh, one week from today, next Wednesday at 7 p.m., for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you very much.